blessings upon Imam Hussain alayhi salam in these holy 10 nights of Muharram where we are here in the holy city of Karbala lamenting the tragedy of Imam Hussain alayhi salam and his brother Abu Fadl Abbas alayhi salam and of course today is a very special night especially for the people who are commemorating here in the city of Karbala because tonight is dedicated to the half brother of Imam Hussain alayhi salam whose name echoes in the hearts of every lover of Hussain and every believer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every true believer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the name of Abu Fadl Abbas alayhi salam. We know the story of Abbas very well. And it suffices to say that his sacrifice was so great, his selflessness was so great, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his justice rewarded him with a shrine almost as glorious and as beautiful as the shrine of Imam Hussain alayhi salam himself. And it is tonight where we remember the story of Abu Fadl Abbas, we remember the story of his sacrifice, and his selflessness, but more so also while we remember it, while we lament for his, his tale, we also remember the epitome, the morals that he, the, 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 the epitome of moral that he was and the lessons that he left behind for us to follow. And one of the greatest lessons he left behind for us is that of patience. So today inshallah, we're going to be tackling the topic of patience, the idea of patience uh, and how we can ensure that in our lives continuously and throughout every, our, our daily lives we can hold on to patience as we know life is very hard while we try our best to ascribe to patience sometimes we falter sometimes we're not able to be patient enough as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be so inshallah today in this discussion with Sayyid Ali uh, Nawab we shall be looking at patience and asking ourselves just how we can really hold firm onto patience the same way that Abdullah Abbas Aysan himself held on to patience. Sayyid Ali, Salaam Alaikum. Salaam Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Thank you. Um, so if you can, if we can start off this uh, uh, segment just by telling us what exactly is patience in terms of the Islamic definition of patience, sabr. What, is it, what does it mean? Ahsan, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Dear viewers uh, and uh, visitors of the uh, master of Martyrs Abi Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. Welcome to the land of Karbala. Uh, tonight, inshallah, we will uh, focus on the issue of patience, sabr, and the lessons we can take to actually implement uh, sabr and patience into our lives. Because life without patience is not worthy of living. And Islamically, um, patience has been described for uh, occasions where one is saddened or goes through a tragedy and uh, needs to practice a certain uh, way of life or a certain lifestyle so he, c he is able to go through that tragedy and that patience or sometimes something harmful he goes through something that will harm him either physically or mentally internally um, so here it is said that if he is able to refrain himself from entering into that harmful exercise or that harmful substance, then that is called patience, to keep himself away, to refrain himself from doing that harmful act. So these things all prevent this person who is able to become patient to um, to stop him from falling into sins because all types of patience protects mankind from falling into sins Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran in description of those who are able to be patient and exercise sabr he says Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa bashir al-sabirin wa bashir al-sabirin al-lazina idha asabatuhum musibah Note here the word musibah, tragedy, has been used. Wabashir al-sabirin. And give glad tidings to those who are patient when they fall into a tragedy. Alladheena idha asabatum musibah qalu. They say, they give acknowledgement. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon that we are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to Him we shall return. And this is the spoken words of the mu'mineen, the believers. Because at times we see the non-believers, they are not able to 
practice patience and they fall into different problems problem after problem and tragedy after tragedy musiba after musiba why for the sole reason that they were not able to be patient in their lives at times we fall into pity things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us continuously there isn't a day that goes through our lives in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not testing Bani Adam Allah continuously says O oh mankind O oh Bani Adam I have created you لنبلوكم, to test you to put you in a state of bala and and the result ayyukum ahsanu amala at the end we want to see which one of you is able to present their actions in the best of ways in the best of forms so وبشر الصابرين الذين اذا اصابتهم مصيبه قالوا انا لله وانا اليه راجعون ان بحار الانوار which carries the traditions and ahadith of Ahlul Bayt in regards with patience. There is a very beautiful narration that says, An Nasru Ma'asabr. Victory comes as a result of patience. Now, at times, that victory may be if you yourself you are fighting with the devil, or you are fighting with the nafs al lawama, or you are fighting against the corruption that you see around you. If you become patient in facing those problems, you will receive victory. You will be victorious. And then, وَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى Again, another portion in the Holy Quran. فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeats this sentence, this, this phrase and this paragraph in the Holy Quran to ensure that mankind know that at times you feel that you're in trouble, you're in pain, you're in difficulty. Allah has brought down His bala upon you. Do not neglect the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after every misery, after every trouble, after every test, He will reward you with yusur, with ease. As a result of your patience and that at the end shows how strong the intellect is if the mind and the intellect is strong you will be able to see that someone is patient against tests and and imtihanat one thing it makes me think of when you think about how close patience is related to faith and how close the two are related to the intellect. Because if we use the intellect, we understand that if we look at life, not just in the context of our own lives, but life in the context of an afterlife as well. And the fact that the afterlife is the real life. It sounds very simple to say, when you think about life in that context, nothing that happens here ultimately matters. If you go through a hard time here, in the wider context of things, you're going to be more rewarded when you go to the afterlife. So that, that helps you bear it by using your intellect to have that patience, which in itself requires uh, that Amir al muminin alayhi salam links this dunya in, ter in terms of sabr and patience and uh, the result of the akhirah. Uh, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam uh, speaks to his companions. Be patient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes and speaks to the Holy Prophet and he says to him Fasbar wama sabruka billah be patient and take that patience from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remember that everything the source of everything is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes we face problems we face tragedies we are tested every day and when we are patient and we be, we come out as victorious individuals we neglect to remind ourselves that the fact that I was able to pass that hurdle and that difficulty in my life was as a, as a result of Allah's blessing upon me because patience is a ni'mah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala
through the Holy Prophet and Ahlul Bayt, they continuously advise Mu'mineen in all walks of life. In all walks of life. They, they advise the little one to be patient, the parents at home. You see, they advise the little one at all stages, be patient. Not everything you need is going to be in your favor. Ahlul Bayt, they advise the youth that they have to practice patience. Don't run behind your lusts and your desires and your interests. At times, you will have to hold back. You have to pull off from your desires and your lusts. Because if you feed that soul and if you give it everything it needs, then you will fall and you will never be able to stand up again. Ahlul Bayt, they advise married couples they advise those who are newly wed. There are many narrations. Rasulullah and Ahlul Bayt they come and advise those who are newly wed to be patient with one another. Because it's a new life. It's a new start. It's a new beginning. You've just come to realize and come to know your partner. At times you might face some difficulties in your life. Be patient. It's one, two days or three days and then life will go on. And the successful, the successful couples are those who are able to be patient. Be patient. From day one, say to yourself, I am going to be patient. My husband, for example, his akhlaq is not what I wanted. Or my wife at home, she's not the wife that I was looking for. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you have two choices. You either become patient and Allah will reward both the husband being patient upon the wife and the wife being patient upon the husband's akhlaq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward them with the paradise. It's all reward in the hereafter. There's no point waiting for reward in this life because this life is one or two days and then it will finish. But we always look and strive to get rewarded in the hereafter. In Kenz al-Amal, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says, Man yatasabbar, whoever is able to be patient, yusabbiruhu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help and support this individual to be patient. Wa ma u'atiyya abdun khayr awsa'u min as-sabr. See how beautiful that is? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says through the Holy Prophet, وَمَا أُعْطِيَ abd." There is no better thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the servant better and wider and bigger than patience. So, what is the philosophy of patience? Patience is divided into three categories in the Islamically, in the Islamic um, jurisprudence. الصبر على البلاء Patience over calamity الصبر على الطاعة Patience over obedience والصبر على المعصية Patience over disobedience Now, patience over calamity, over بلاء Imam Hussain عليه السلام, I just remember this beautiful portion of, of his sermons uh, on the way to Karbala Anas uh, Abidu Dunya. People are slaves of this pity world. If they were to be tested with Bala, and the Imam is saying the majority of the people of this life they lose out. Anas Abidu Dunya. In Kitab al Kafi, a Juz al Thani, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, Manibtulia min al Mu'minin bibala in fasabara alay kan lahu methil and wait for it. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, From the Mu'minin, from the believers and the faithful, those who are practicing their lives and they're practicing their deen and their religion according to the 
school of thought of Ahlul Bayt والسلام, especially those youth, the Shabab, because the West and the media and the different tides of uh, problems emotionally, physically, mentally are all directed towards the youth. If those youth, if those Shabab are able to be patient in those circumstances, and in those situations, Imam Sadiq, what does he say? Man ubtuliya min al mu'minin bi bala'in fa sabara alayh. If you are tested and you become patient, kana lahu and the thawab and the blessings and the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what? Kana lahu mithil ajr alf shaheed. When we talk about shaheed, we talk about those brave companions of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. How high status they have. They made the hardest decision in the world. They made the most difficult of decisions. But then they were rewarded. Those youth, the Mu'mineen, the Shabab, our brothers and sisters, if they hold back and they become patient in times of Masa'ib, in times where the shaitan and the devil and the people around you and surrounding you are doing their best to drag you down in, ta in terms of akhlaq and ethics and moral in, ta in terms of hijab and modesty and protecting your existence as a Muslim as a Muslim carrying the banner of Islam Carrying the banner of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, which was the banner of reform. The reform, as they say, charity starts at home. Reform starts with yourself. If you are able to protect yourself, protect your modesty, then you will be able to go out there and protect and save those around you. Inshallah, that is clear. And Al Imam al Baqir, all of these traditions I have brought. Because Muharram and Ashura and the Majalis of Abi Abdullah al Hussein are universities. The least we can say is a university that we sit down and learn and practice those things that Ahlul Bayt teach us. And today's lesson is about patience. And Imam al Baqir alayhi salam, Al Jannatu Mahfufatun bil Makarih. If you want to reach Jannah, it's not easy. You think that it's, that's it, you live a couple of days in this life, you enjoy yourself, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all merciful, He will come and reward you with the Jannah without any exams, without any tests. No. Imam al Baqir alayhi salam says, Al Jannah mahfufatun bil makarih wa sabr faman sabara ala al makarih fi dunya dakhal al Jannah. And the one who is able to become patient in this dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward them with a paradise. That was patience over masaib, calamity. Now let's come to patience over obedience. What does that mean? That means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, has told me that you have to pray five times a day. Salah, an example, salat al subh. And it is the most difficult of times for someone in our age, yeah. inshallah, we acknowledge ourselves to be youth, to wake up at four in the morning, at five in the morning, especially if you have stayed up, at, uh, uh, stayed up late with your friends outside. We have to doing wake up early for work, early ascent, for school. Ascent. So, Salat al-Subh, I say, okay, Salat al-Subh, if I don't wake up, it's no problem. I will be able to do Qadha. Yeah. No. Patience over obedience is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, If you want to show me obedience, you show me obedience in your salah, in your psalm, in your ibadat, in your akhlaq. Wake up for salat al subuh, you're showing obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have been patient. Why? Because you are depriving yourself from that cozy bed, from sleeping, and you're saying, Oh Allah, because I want to show my obedience to you, I have woken up to pray. Patience over fasting. 
especially if you're fasting in hot countries or in countries where the fasting is in long hours. This is a type of sabr. Imam Ali alayhi salam says fi kitab al-irshad in the book of irshad al-qulub inna wajadna al-sabr ala ta'atillah subhanahu wa ta'ala inna wajadna al-sabr ala ta'atillah aysar min al-sabr ala adhabih if you become patient in obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Imam Ali says that is easier than being patient uh, over his ma'asi uh, or doing the ma'asi and Allah will uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, eventually place you in the hellfire inna wajadna sabr ala ta'atillahi aysar easier if we if we are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ala sabr ala adabe and the third point patience over disobedience it's clear you are disobedient you are disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the verse of the Holy Quran outlines this point Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa ka'ayyin min nabiyyin qatala ma'ahu rabbiyyuna kathirun fama wahinu lima asabahum fi sabilillah wa ma za'afu wa ma stakanu wallahu yuhibbu as-sabirin and those individuals who accepted the message of the prophets and those who at some stage in their lives were dis disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but when their call of the prophet and the messenger was received by them they obeyed the holy prophet and they strived towards obedience towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they left the, the, the actions that they disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Allah will love them and what does it mean when Allah loves you Allah loves you and he will place you in Jannah Husaynun minni wa ana min Husayn ahabballah man ahabba Husayn those who are patient Allah will love hmm. and sometimes we are patient because we are lovers of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. because we are lovers of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, people are attacking us left right and center so because of that love we are patient and we will be rewarded when Rasulullah says and whoever Allah loves they will be rewarded with the paradise Amir al-Mu'mineen salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi says bis-sabri there are some things that interest you in life some desires some interests Amir al-Mu'mineen says بِالصَّبْرِ تَرْكُ الرَّغَائِبِ by using patience by exercising patience you will be able to overpower your lusts and your interests Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran says قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ Zakaha waqad khaba man dasaha. How can you do tazkiyah to the soul? How can you purify the soul? The only way is to do is to practice patience. To have al uqul. You see how much I am bombarding you with this riwayat and ahadith because patience is the most important thing in our lives. And if we are able to exercise patience, especially in our life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward us the best of rewards to have an uqul and an imam Musa ibn Ja'far salawatullahi wa salamu alayhim ajma'in asbar ala ta'atillah wasbar ala ma'asillah fa inna madunya sa'ah if you want to calculate and draw a comparison between the time you spend on earth in this life and the time in the hereafter, the time you spend on earth is not even equivalent to one hour of and the life. And that back to what I was saying about thinking about life in context Ahsan. and the other life as well. Ahsan. And say we have about 15 minutes left inshallah. So if you can conclude this, um, you mentioned some amazing points about patience. I'm very, very inspired and I hope that inshallah, as I mentioned when, I, when we began this series, I hope that each and every single one of us when we come 
uh, to the morning of Imam Hussain uh, for the 10 days of Muharram, one thing that we can try to do is take something that we need to improve on in our lives and try and aim towards that over the course of the 40 days that is from the first of Muharram till the Arbaeen of Imam Hussain Islam. Me personally, I'm going to try my best, inshallah, said with your advice and your support to try and be a bit more patient. I think um, these are very beautiful hadith that I've tried to, that have really inspired me as well and I'm sure inspired many at home to kind of um, take this on board. If you can kindly conclude this topic uh, and also link it toward the person who we are here to lament today, which who is of course the father of patience, I will follow Abbas. Just to conclude with a with a, 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 a riwayah or a hadith, Imam Hussein alayhi salam in the books of Maqatil, he says, uh, it is recorded that Imam Hussein after praying Salat al-Subh, in al Hussein salla bi ashabihi al-Ghadat, Salat al-Subh, thumma al-tafata ilayhim, he looked at his companions, faqal, inna Allah qad adhina fi qatlikum, fa'alaykum bis sabr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us permission to go and fight for his cause. The only thing that Imam advises his companions is patience. And then Imam Hussain alayhi salam says, Sabran bani al-kiram Fama al-mawtu illa qantara ta'buru bukum min al-bu'si wa al-dharra ila al-jinan al-wasi'ah wa al-na'im al-da'im Abi al-Fadl al-Abbas One of the ulama was saying that Abil Fadl al Abbas, he reached a level of Ainul Yaqeen. Hmm. Ainul Yaqeen means there are times where you don't see the Yaqeen or you don't see that thing, but you have Yaqeen that it exists. And there is Ainul Yaqeen, is that you have Yaqeen and then you see that thing which adds to that yaqeen. Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam says, لَوْ كُشِفَ لِيَ الْغِطَاءَ مَزْدَدْتُ يَقِينَ Abi 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 Fadl al-Abbas is the son of Ali ibn Abi Talib salawatu allahi wa salamu alayhi. Lady Zainab is described in the ziyarah as Jabal al-Sabr. Abi Fadl al-Abbas when you read his ziyarah, what do you say? فَنَعْمَ الصَّابِرِ الْمُجَاهِدِ وَالْمُحَامِ النَّاصِرِ أو الْمُحَامِ الدَّافِعَ عَنْ أَخِيهِ المجاهد الصابر المجاهد When you read the ziyara of Imam Hussain alayhi salam وَصَبَرْتَ عَلَى الْأَذَى فِي جَنْبِهِ مُحْتَسِبًا حَتَّى أَتَاكَ الْيَقِينِ When you do sabr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you with yaqeen. And when you have yaqeen, then that's it. You have passed your tests. There is nothing, even if the devil brings all of his workers to try to pull you towards the desires of this life, he will never be able to be successful. Al-Abbas, when you read Ziyara again, فَجَزَاكَ اللَّهِ عَنُ رَسُولِهِ وَعَنْ أَمِيرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَعَنِ الْحَسَنِ وَالْحُسَيْنِ صَلَوَاتُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِمْ أَفْضَلَ الْجَزَاء أفضل الجزاء the best of rewards why بما صبرت واحتسبت وأعد as a result what is the جزاء فنعم أقبل دار to see your brother and his children face thousands of warriors on the battlefield and you can stand there and be patient is a big thing on many occasions, Abel Fadl al-Abbas alayhi salam came to his brother Hussein. Akhi ya Hussein, laqad nafadha sabri, I cannot take it anymore. Eithan li bil qital, liakhudha bithari wa tharik, wa thari haula alladhina qutilu bayna yadayk. Oh brother, give me, allow me, give me your word. I'm waiting for that okay for you from you so I can go to the battlefield. Abi Abdullah Hussein said to his brother, Akhi Ya Hussein, and that is after all companions became martyrs and fell on the plains of Karbala. Bani Hashim one by one went, starting with Ali Al-Akbar, Al-Qasim, 
the brothers of Al Qasim and the rest until Abu Al Fadl Abbas was the only left soldier in the camp of Abi Abdullah Hussein. He came. He said, Akhi Ya Hussein, these children, Sukaina, Ruqayya, the little ones, are begging me for some water because in the event of Ashura, Abu Al Fadl Abbas on different occasions was able to go to the river and bring water. That's why one of the titles of Abu Al-Fadl Abbas was As-Saqqa. As-Saqqa, the ones who brings water. Oh, Brother Hussein, these children, they are requesting water from me. Then Lee. Imam Hussein alayhi salam says, Akhi Abu Al-Fadl, Ida anta dhahabt wa qutilt, fa inna ya'ulu jam'una ila shatat. If you go and never come back, what am I going to do? My camp is going to be shattered. Go bring water for these kids. Abel Fal comes, bids farewell to his sister Zainab and the little children, and Abi Abdullah Al Hussein. Hugs. It is narrated that Abi Abdullah and Abu Al Fadl hugged each other and they cried for a long time. Ihtadana akhah wa bakaya sa'ah. Because I think they both knew. Abu Abdullah and Abu Al Fadl, they both knew that this is the last time they are going to be able to see each other in that state. And then Abi Abi Fadl Abbas rides on his horse and charges towards the Furat. It is narrated that Umar ibn Sa'ad had placed 4,000 soldiers on the banks of the Furat. Abu Al Fadl, being the brave warrior and the son of Ali ibn Abi Talib, was able to access the Furat. He entered the Furat. He took wa akhada ghurfatan min al ma, brought it next to him. He looked at the water. And he started reciting these pieces of poetry. Ya nafsu min ba'dil Hussein huni Wa ba'dahu la kunti aw takuni Hada Husseinun waridun Manuni wa tashrabin baridayan ma'ini He throws the water back, he fills the water container Mala al qirbah And he started making his way back Because his only responsibility And what Abi Abdullah had asked him to do Is to bring the water back to the khiyam Abi Abil Fadl al Abbas rides back, charging towards the enemies and wanting to reach the the tents in the in the safest of, of ways and in the best of ways. One of the enemies hides behind one of the palm trees in the name of uh, Zayd ibn Warqa, and he was aided by Hakim or Hukaim ibn Tufail. They hide behind one of the palm trees. Ajarakumullah. As Abu Al Fadl was making his way towards the Khiyam, this Zayd ibn Al Warqa raises his sword and strikes Abu Al Fadl on the right hand. Abu Al Fadl Al Abbas starts saying, Wallah, in Qata'atumu Yamini, inni Uhami Abadan. عن ديني وعن إمام صادق اليقين نجل النبي الطاهر الأمين أبو فاضل takes the sword in his left hand and charges towards the tents حكيم بن الطفيل hides behind another tree raises his sword and strikes it on the left left hand of Abu Fadil, Abu Fadil, no sword to fight with, stands there not knowing what to do, takes the water container on his teeth, 
أن سيز يا نفس لا تخشي من الكفار واستبشري برحمة الجبار مع النبي الطاهر المختار قد قطعوا ببغيهم يساري فأصلهم يا رب حر النار in that situation Abu Fadl with his severed right and left still wants to take the water container to the Khiyam why? because he promised to Kena that he will come back with the water uh, here the enemies they didn't know what to do Umar bin Sa'ad says if a single drop of that water reaches the tents then Abu Abdullah al Hussein is going to wipe all of you from the face of this earth do whatever it takes the enemies of Allah they started hitting Abu Fadl with stones and rocks some of them they started showering Abu Fadl with their arrows one of the arrows pierced the water container Abu Fadl noticed the water is dispersing here he stood there no arms to fight with no water to be taken to the tents in that situation one of the enemies came and struck one of the arrows to the right eye of Abu Fadl Abu Fadl's eye started bleeding heavily another enemy came and struck Abu Fadl with a metal arrow with a metal stick on the head of Abu Fadl Abu Fadl falls to the ground it was then that he heard them the mother of Abi Abdullah, Fatima al Zahra, calling out, Waladi Abbas, wa walada, wa Abbasa. Here Abu Fadl says, I called out, wa akha, wa Husayna. Abu Abdullah charges towards the enemies, killing Ibn al Tufail, and arrives at the body of Abu Fadl. He was holding one, one hand on his back. Abu Fadl Father Abu Fadl's head is bleeding heavily. Imam Hussein comes towards Abu Fadl. Abu Fadl says, "Aksamu alaik billahi ahada," because he didn't know who's coming and arriving at his side. Abu Abdullah says, "I heard my brother say, 'Ahada, aksamu alaik, and tamhilni hunaya until my brother Hussein comes and I bid him farewell." Imam Hussein says, "Ana akhuk, ana akhak." Hussein, he takes the head of Abu Fadl, places it in his lap. Abu Fadl takes his head and places it back on the ground. He does that three times. Abu Abdullah says, Akhiya Abu Fadl, why do you take your head out of my lap? Abu Fadl says, Akhiya Hussein, now you put my head in your lap. But an hour later, who is going to put your head in their lap? Abu Abdullah makes his way back to the tents. How is he going to tell Lady Zainab that Abu Fadl has been killed, has been martyred. The only way he was able to inform the family and little Sikaina was he came to the tent of Abu Fadl. He came, he went inside the Khaimah. He took the pillar of the Khaimah and he pulled the pillar. The tent of Abu Fadl came down to the ground. It was then that Lady Zainab strikes her head and shouted, Wa Akha, Wa Abbas, Khoya, Khoya. من تل جبتني وبيدك يا خويا ركبتني Brother Abbas You was the one that brought me from Medina to Karbala Come back and take me back to the land of my grandfather Rasulullah صلى الله عليك يا أبا الفضل العباس صلى الله عليك يا ساقي عطاشا كربلاء صلى الله عليك يا حامل اللواء We send our peace and blessings upon Abu Fadl Abbas Islam and his brother Imam Hussein Islam on this uh, tragic night where we are lamenting Abu Fadl Abbas and as we know Abu Fadl is meant to be a door to wishes you can see his beautiful glorious shrine behind me and we pray, inshallah, that Abu Fadl Abbas 
we pray that for Allah Abbas through the intercession, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the intercession of Allah Abbas Islam grants all of our wishes, removes all of our hardships, and gives us the patience to bear any calamities that may come our way, inshallah. Inshallah, we'll be joined uh, by Sayyid Ali Hakim. After the break, we'll be reciting some beautiful lessons for us, inshallah. We'll see you then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.